everybody and welcome back to the Worship Effect. Now, as you can see from the other interviews, I'm sitting with Pat Rodridge from the Sound of Wales. Hello, all. Thank you for sitting down with me. Shumai. Oh, all right. <laughs> Shumai. I love it. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about worship okay. because that's kind of the forefront of what you do. You're a worship leader. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't it? And I've seen you travelling well, everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've been to around the globe doing this worship leading. Yeah. But you sound different yeah. to anybody else that's out there at the minute. Sure. Right? Why? Why is that? All I want to do is to sing the song that has first been sung over me back to my king mm. and to bring everyone like, like on that journey. It's not about fitting a mould. That's right. And I think, you know, what comes out of me has to be an overflow of my heart that is rooted in the secret place Mm. that comes from a place of of just my complete adoration of who he is from the abandoned place and so all i can be is me and i think i've learned you know it's so easy isn't it to try and fit these certain modes you hear someone that you love or that you think has got an amazing voice or wow look at her passion or and i've just learned Kath, this is one thing that Kevin Adams said to me, he said, always be authentically you and nothing else. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what we've all got to be. Yeah. Just bringing our little bit of the jigsaw yeah. to the whole picture. Do you think that in churches, rather than encouraging the youth and the, the future worship leaders, pastors and everything, to be themselves. We're trying to fit them into being something that has worked for someone else. Absolutely. And I think it's time that we get brave and get courageous and step out and uh, allow, allow ourselves to be taken aside by this God who we know as Emmanuel, this God who knows us intimately and allow the overflow of individual hearts to come out in its own expressions without trying to make it something that it's not. Yeah, and what would you say to worship leaders that are trying to find yeah. who they are and what they sound like? Because it's a journey, isn't it? I it mean, is it journey. isn't like an overnight thing. Like, I found who I am. No. It's, it's a process. And sometimes, in some cases, it can be a, a painful one. Yeah, it um, can. You know, because when I went out to America and was living there for a while, I came home, sounded like Raimi Whelan, Ray Hughes' daughter. <laughs> she's, da- she's amazing. I mean, yeah. you know, who wouldn't want to sound like her? But I forgot who I was. The journey was about me. Absolutely. Finding who I was and not finding out who someone else was. So the journey can be difficult. It can be. And I think something that really struck me, you know, we see um, in the Gospels when Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say I am? Mm. And they say, oh, some say you're Elijah. You know, some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you are Jesus, son of the living God. And I love that. I almost feel like what I'd want to say to worship leaders is, Faith, who do you say mm. your saviour is? Yeah. Because we all have the same, like, a baseline of, you know, who he is in our theology. But, but we have, a, if you have a living relationship with him, yeah. you're going to say something different to I'm going to say. Because right. he's my father and he's your father, but we're different people. That's right. So who do you say he is, Faith? Sing yeah. out of that. Yeah. Who do you say he is, Kath? Sing out of that. And just sing the overflow of your heart and not trying to be anything. And another verse I love is, open your mouth and he will fill it. And it's not about opening my mouth and trying to create something. It's opening my mouth and just, but not by might, not by strength, but by his spirit, just allowing what comes out to be completely and uniquely what he designed it for in the secret place. I think people are fearful of that. Yeah, oh, I think. Because it's that, you know, there's nothing worse than being on the stage and then nothing totally (laughs) and do you know what it is it's the call of the levite and if you look Mm -hmm. at at levites throughout the old testament i mean what they're doing is they're going out and claiming ground that's never been taken before that's scary because you never know what reaction is going to come back no one's ever done it before so you've got no one to follow in their footsteps what if your sound is different what if you're 
But that's what a Levitical call is. It's going out. It's saying, you know, um, I will I will do this because the cause of my heavenly father is greater. And even if I look a fool, it'll be worth it. I mean, David, he went out and he danced and dignified for his God. Yeah. And he was known as the man after God's heart. Yeah. You know, so it's about taking that ground that no one's taken before. And it's scary because you haven't got footsteps to kind of try and follow, but go and be led by him because he is the best shepherd anyone <laughs> I mean follow. more would be accomplished by someone being authentic even if it sounds dodgy yeah because the heart is authentic more would be accomplished out of that worship that God can use mm -hmm. than out of a heart that's not hard yeah absolutely and I would agree with that and I think you know truth and spirit coming together and going forth and uh, you know in in courage is is a beautiful recipe yeah. i think now there was a worship leader called dr Bertel, and we were speaking to him not long ago right yeah and he said in order to break the mold you have to fit it first so you have look at bethel yeah and understand the principles by which they're working with. Mm -hmm. So they're a very prophetic worship team. You know, <clears throat> they, they just go with spontaneity and all those things. Don't copy those things, but understand there is a mode for the prophetic, which is scriptural. Yeah. So we, I think as Welsh people often, chuck the baby out of the bathwater. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Do you know what I mean? And we do away with it all. Yes. And that's what happened after the revival. Yeah. So rather than people singing hymns freely before God, um, you know, we're praying freely, intercessing freely, all these types of things, right? Well, now it's gone too far. So let's chuck the baby at the bathwater and get rid of it all. Yeah. Yes, and I think we, we are sometimes in danger of removing even the principles that the Bible provides us yeah. in some cases. Yes, we are. What would you say to worship leaders? Where do they start? Where do they start their journey to know about worship leading? You know, do you know where I started, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the Psalms. <laughs> Me too. In the Psalms. Yeah. It's a beautiful place to go because here you've got like King David, a, a worshipper, a worship leader in his day. Yeah. What I love about the Psalms is they journey through every season. That's right. And it just has this, this thread that goes through it. It's like, he is mighty to save, even when it's rough, even when it's rough, he is mighty to save, he is mighty to save. And I would say like, go to the Psalms and recognize that, you know, there will be, there will be postures of lament and that's okay he yes. weeps with us there will be postures of high praise and boys there with us there will be postures of um of, of of feeling despondent why so downcast oh my soul put your hope in god i think the psalms are just brilliant because it it covers this plethora of how we can come with our heart just as we are before a God who is unchangeable, before a God who is our steady rock, before a God who never changes. And so, you know, it's, it's the worshippers yeah. that he wants. You know, it, it's our hearts that he yeah. wants. So I would say just come as you are yeah. um, and bring your knees before you bring your hands. Bring your knees before you bring your hands. There is a truth to Humility before the Lord. Absolutely. Before worship. Yeah. If there's no humility, mm -hmm. worship becomes just clashing symbol. Completely. It absolutely just no point. becomes a show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Definitely. A show that you, you can't do that. The congregation can't function when it's a show. Not at all. They need humility. Someone to come up and say, I've done nothing special. I've just done my art. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. A heart and a gift. And yeah. I'm just putting them together. I'm just bringing them together. And yeah. then just see what happens. Opening my mouth and letting the sound out. And it's yeah. true. It's so simple. And we complicate it. Don't we? we do. We make it. We've got to intercede for 10 hours before we go onto the platform and everything. And all the Lord's asking is a take a heart of intercession. Just a, a, a yielded a, a heart. A yielded heart. That's exactly what he wants, isn't it? 
and drag that around with it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was reading um, in Luke 5 the other day and there's this amazing little bit of scripture right at the beginning of Luke 5 where Jesus is talking to the disciples. The disciples, they've been out fishing all night and they haven't caught a thing. They haven't yeah. caught a thing yeah. and they're so disappointed, right? Yeah. And there they are having a little, you know, poody as we call it in Wales, a yeah. little mood, you know, washing <laughs> their nets. Yeah. And Jesus sees these empty boats and he goes out into the empty boats and he preaches and something dropped into my heart. If those boats would have been filled with a catch that those men thought were what they needed, mm. that boat wouldn't have been empty in order to house the feet of Jesus. And, and that's, you know, worship is about surrender. We think, I'm going to, you know, Simon wanted his boat to be full oh. of fish. Yeah. We want our boat to be full of amazing songs, amazing musicians, this, 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 all of these things that we think makes this amazing worship be the, no, 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 no. Yeah. What he wants is a heart yielded, a heart that is open to allow the feet of Jesus to come in without any of the fish. He doesn't need the fish. No. All we need is the feet of Jesus. It says, well, Jesus can feed 5,000. Without, <laughs> without, yeah, without even going fishing. Yeah. Completely. So why do you need to fill a boat? Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. It's mad, isn't it? Well, when Jesus did do that miracle, what did he do? He took the bread, he broke it, and he thanked the Lord. If you're not thankful, you can't multiply nothing. Amen. Yeah. So come out of a thankful, it's got humble to. heart. Absolutely. Yeah. I could talk to you all day about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Kat, can I say thank you so much for allowing us to come and talk to you? Oh, it's been a pleasure. Honestly. Now, you're going to see a lot more of Kath, I know it, <laughs> with the worship effect. So thank you, and we honour everything that you do. Oh, bless you. Because you're doing you. so much for us and for the church around the globe. It's amazing what you're doing, and I know that God's blessing on it. So. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Kath. It's a privilege. <laughs> thank you.